I'm Kate. In this video, we're going to help you understand wage exemptions available for payroll tax. By understanding these, you can make sure you're claiming the exemptions and concessions you're entitled to, rather than the ones you're not. There are four types of exemptions we'll look at. Employers, employees, leave and allowances. I'll pop in from time to time to cover some important points. But in the meantime, remember Mary and Paul from before? Let's go back and see how they're going with working out what exempt wages are. Thanks for taking time out to help me again. Going through taxable wages helped me a lot. I'd like to do the same with exempt wages. Happy to help out. I know how confusing payroll tax can be when you're new to it. Hopefully David doesn't barge in this time. Uh, now, to start, uh, there are some types of employers who are exempt from payroll tax. Unfortunately, we aren't one. Employers who are exempt from paying payroll tax are religious organisations, certain public health service providers, schools below tertiary level, some government departments, public benevolent institutions and certain charitable institutions. If you think you are eligible for a payroll tax exemption as a charitable institution, you must apply in writing by completing the application form available on our website. There are certain employees whose wages are exempt from payroll tax. Uh, do you know any of these? I know we have some apprentices whose wages are exempt and we also have some employees who are on workers' compo. That's correct. Uh, I've dealt with heaps of apprentices over the years and there are certain things that have to be done so we can claim the exemption. The apprentice and the employer must sign the apprenticeship contract and the contract must be registered with the relevant department. Be aware that for exempt apprentices, you can also exempt their superannuation, allowances and leave. Importantly, the wages will be exempt only for the date stated on the signed contract. After this time, the wages would no longer qualify for an exemption and would only be declared under taxable wages. You mentioned some employees uh, being paid workers' compensation. Uh, can you give me any more details about this topic? I can. I know that wages paid in accordance with workers' compensation legislation are not subject to payroll tax. However, any make-up pay we pay them is liable for payroll tax. That's really great. Uh, the other two types of exempt employees are certain overseas employees and employees with a disability. Uh, do you have any of them on the payroll? Mm, not at the moment. OK, if that changes, remember that the Office of State Revenue website has a lot of information on this. Wages for expatriate employees who are working wholly in another country or countries for a period of greater than six months are exempt from payroll tax. If you're unsure of how long someone will be overseas, declare their wages and if they end up being away for greater than six months, you can make an adjustment at the annual reconciliation. Remember, the exemption includes the first six months. Wages for new employees with disabilities are also exempt from payroll tax for the first two years, providing the employee was hired on or after the 1st of July 2012, the employer is in receipt of a wage subsidy or other form of disability services commission support, and the employee is employed and remunerated in accordance with the minimum standards established under industrial law. The third category for exemptions is leave. Do you know what types of leave are exempt from payroll tax? I know that maternity leave is exempt and we actually have a few people on that leave right now. Correct. Maternity leave falls under the heading of parental leave which also includes parental and adoption leave. This exemption covers up to 14 weeks full pay or the equivalent. Substantiation is required and it does not include any regular leave taken at the same time. There are two other leave types that are exempt from payroll tax, which I wasn't aware of when I first started working here. Uh, these are Defence Forces and Emergency Services leave. That's good to know. I hear a couple of people talk about volunteering with the SES. As with other types of leave, substantiation is required and the exemption does not include any regular leave taken at the same time. The final category for exemptions is allowances. Didn't we speak about allowances when discussing taxable wages? Yes, we did. Uh, the allowances that are exempt are motor vehicle and overnight accommodation allowances. Uh, the rates for these are set by the ATO. 
uh, let's go to the payroll tax employer guide. If you search for motor vehicle allowance, you'll see the formula used to work out the exempt component. You multiply the business kilometres travelled by the allowance rate. This is the exempt amount to subtract from the allowance that was paid. What's left is subject to payroll tax. Business kilometres must be recorded using either the continuous recording method or averaging method in order to qualify for the exemption. The averaging method requires records to be kept for a continuous period of 12 weeks to work out the percentage of business travel. The overnight accommodation allowance has amounts for room, food and incidentals. For the exemption to apply, there must be overnight accommodation included and we need records. Is this the same as the living away from home allowance? And no, I thought that at first. The living away from home allowance comes under the fringe benefits declaration. So those are the exemptions that you can claim. Okay, that's great. Thanks for all your help. So that covers exempt wages. If you want further information about wages, you can refer to a number of our resources on our website. There's the Payroll Tax Employer Guide, which is a comprehensive, interactive and easy to use document, as well as a number of fact sheets and revenue rulings. The Office of State Revenue also offers free information seminars relating to payroll tax. For any payroll tax queries, you can visit the Department of Finance website or send through a web inquiry via www.osr.wa.gov.au forward slash payroll inquiry. You can call our office on 9262 1300. Country callers can reach us on 1300 368 364. Thank you for joining us.